Authority is basically how you are designed to best make your decisions and how you receive intuitive hits. Danny, do you have anything to add to that? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, this whole thing with authority, this is that reliable place inside of us, right? That that even if you're a generator and your authority isn't your sacral, just it's that it's that reliable place inside of you by which you get to make the final decision on everything, the tiny things, the medium things, the big things. So what what is that? That's how you navigate through your life, period. So how you fall into disarray and everything sucks or how you do just great and things just seem to chug along one way or another. So this, pretend this pie graph represents all of humanity, the whole however billion people we have on the planet. And this is how they're divvied up according to their authority type. So if you can look here, emotional authority is about 50.3%, 51, some people say. Um, so that yep. is over half the planet. Over half the planet. Yeah. I like to call it half. Um, I have I love this thing about the solar plexus. This emotional authority, it's there's um there's something bigger with this as it relates to just the authority of the solar plex center. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that it's 50-50. I mean, plus or minus a few tenths of a percent, it's 50-50. And so I always like pointing out that the forces um want us to figure this thing out and, and it's fitting solar plex is waking up in our lifetimes mm -hmm. that, i mean that's you know that's pretty rare that you are alive at a time that something like this is taking place and so so the, for, for those who are like what on earth is danny talking about now oh, <laughs> so i can't when do you, a show on my own i need a translator <laughs> you, you're just like what with the jargon land. So when you've looked at your body graph, you'll notice that there's those shapes, right? So those shapes are your energy centers. And that part of your chart comes from the yogic slash Vedic traditions from India, where you look at all your chakras. You've probably seen them at yoga studios or at your, you know, your local witchy shops. Remember a person sitting and you have the rainbow of colors going down the middle and they call it your chakras. It's the same Thing. When did the solar plexus become a thing? Like what year? Do you remember? Well, 1781 is when is when it truly came online for us. And so we spent, you know, a hundred years not noticing, noticing that we can't tell what it is, not noticing. Ah, okay, yeah. sure. So let's just let's just call that the ballpark point where well, there's another ballpark point just because there's another here. So so and it's somewhere between the birth, the death of Buddha and the birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. is when the is is when this solar plex center became available uh, uh, it became available a thing, right. became online and then because, when we turned yeah. into these nine centered beings it came online exactly so in the yogic uh you know chakra system there's only seven but in human design you notice that's nine right. so there's right. two centers that split off yes and the solar plexus center which is still in, you know, the yoga tradition, split off into solar plexus and your spleen. Mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, so the way the splitting really took place is the uh, number four and five were together. All that ah, talk about okay. the ego, you know what I mean? The ego, this is, there's too much. So your ego. heart. So when yes. you look at the, 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 the rainbow chakra system, right? Yep. The the green one, which was always referred to as your heart, is the one that you're seeing here. It split you know, into four and five. The heart, didn't it? Did it not? Whenever we spoke about the heart center, the heart um, chakra in the old seven center system, did we not talk about both uh, our love of ourself, the heart for ourself, and our heart out in the world? Like a kid's got heart, that's the ego. The, so one is the ego's ability to do, and the other is the love of the self, and you know, in the life, mm -hmm. um, and the direction. So these two things split off because the identity of humanity, this love and direction of humanity, no longer needed to be one with the ego. The ego could stand alone finally. Mm. 
So then uh, what we were talking about before we got to the slide, Danny's bright idea to use a visual reference, yes, which yes, I yes. did make. Then three split into what, three, which was just the spleen. Yeah, I don't know. So what one and three. That, that yeah, it's, it's a solar plexus. It's literally the solar plexus, it, the same thing. It's the, if I know my rainbow order, it was root and then solar plexus. So it was the orange one. Wow. So they didn't have one for spleen directly? No. So then that split apart, the split apart. That was always spleen, what they called solar plexus. Something had to act as the spleen because we've had that the whole time. That was That's kept right. us alive this whole time. Right. The spleen keeps us alive, literally. So, um, now that you, you know the, the visual representation of what that rambling tangent was about, now we can go back to this and explain what this was about. So... Um, like Danny mentioned, we have a 50-ish oh, split, um, yep. which means that about half or a smidge over half of the population of the world has emotional authority, meaning they have their solar plexus defined. So we'll explain what that means in a second. And then uh, the next biggest on the pie chart you will see is your sacrals. Okay. And Danny can tell you there's only uh, one type that could ever be a sacral authority, which is your generators, both pure and manifesting. Yep. Yep. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And here we're just showing the visual representation of the <laughs> breakdown of, okay, you know, most people have emotional, then the next most is sacral, then yep. the next most is splenic. And splenic can come in how many varieties? So manifestors oh, can be splenic, oh, can come projectors. In manifestors and projectors, and that's it. That's it. Oh, okay. Only manifestors and projectors can be splenic. Um, and then if you look here, it's just kind of hard to see. Your ego slash heart is that tiny little maroony sliver. There you go. Ta -da! So it's only like 1%. <laughs> Yep, you got right. it. You're a manifestor and that you have that channel of money, uh, 2145 this materialistic leadership of the tribe. Um, if that's, that can only be the authority if there is literally no other definition below the throat. There can be, think about it. So there's a definition that defines the uh, uh, um, the root and the solar plex, now solar plex authority, root and the sacral. Well, you're a generator now, you're not a manifester. Root and the throat center, um, root can't go to the throat center. You know, and then if and so any definition that defines the G center, now the G center technically becomes ego identity projected, you know. So, anyways, so that, that's what this, yeah, that's what this blue one is. Mental projectors. Uh, you can only no, sorry, I'm lying. I'm talking about the yellow one, self-projected, yep. right? So self-projected, it's your G center. Um, and only projectors can be self-projected. Yep. And That's then it. you have your mental projectors. Uh, and then your last one is our special reflectors. So last week's episode was reflectors and reflectors don't have an authority. So last I knew they were hovering at right just a hair over 1%. So now we can explain this pecking order thing. So when you have, when you're looking at your body graph, your authority comes from what centers you have defined. So what that means is if you have your solar plexus defined, it doesn't matter what other stuff you have in your chart. This is like numero uno. So this is automatically you are now an emotional authority. Now let's yeah. say you don't yeah. have this um, yep. defined and instead you have your sacral defined. Then without bam. The solar plex, without number without one. The, without number one. So I'm like, eh, like not looking at one, then you become sacral. But exception to this is again, not everybody is a generator. If you don't have your sacral defined and you have your spleen, then that in turn becomes your number two. Yeah. So well, I mean, yeah, that's why it's number three on the chart. So, and, and if you look at it, it goes right across. What I was about to say on the pie chart, I'll just say here, if number one isn't present, no matter what else is, if number one isn't present and number two is, Two because everything defaults to two, no matter what else. If number two isn't present and there's no, so it's not a generator, and and number one and two aren't present, then number three it defaults to three, and that's why it keeps getting smaller in percentage because we we, we run out the mass of people. And now, uh, number four was our G center. So if you have your G center defined, 
even if you have your ego defined, you're still going to be a G center authority. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. It's uh, some people would argue that point it gets to be a nuance because whenever the ego and the identity are defined and somewhere in there is your authority, we call them both out to describe it. Mm. Regardless. Okay. So it's, they might as well be called, um, you know, four and four. I'm the <laughs> number, the number. Four. Yeah. And lastly, these are our special <laughs> projector friends. Yeah. Who, if they have none of these other five defined and they have this center defined, they become mental projectors. They are indeed very, very rare in the projector land. 